Hello everybody, you're watching The Everton Show on YouTube and by the way, as always, please feel free to leave your comments below. As you can see, we're at the training complex here at USM Finch Farm. It's been transfer deadline week this week and this guy's joined us, Nicola Vlasic. Nicola, welcome to Everton. Are you happy to be here? Thank you. I'm very excited to be in this big club. We're very excited to have you. Let's have a look at Nicola's first day as an Everton player. Nicola, what are your first impressions of the training ground? I came here, it's, I can see it's a big club, you know, everything is uh, so high level, everything, uh, everything is on the place, you know, I meet uh, people that are very nice to me, I didn't meet uh, players because they, they are not here yet, but I'm, uh, I'm happy to meet them in the future, and uh, it's, I don't know, I'm so impressed uh, about Everton club and I'm so excited and I can't uh, wait to start training and play games. You haven't met the players yet at Finch Farm, but you've played against them already this season. What were your impressions of Everton when Hadjuk played us in the Europa League? Yeah, we play uh, first game here in uh, Liverpool and uh, we play against them and you know, it's, uh, you already feel uh, what players are there and uh, it was a so, so good experience, you know, I feel the span, uh, fans, I feel the, the feel close to the fans, you know, it, it was amazing and uh, yeah, but it's different, you know, I, I've been now, uh, they've been now my teammates and I'm very excited to meet them all as a person. I'm very excited to play at Goodison Park, our home stadium. Yeah, the, all the stadium in England and I'm very, very excited. You're still a young man, still a young footballer, but have you always wanted to play in the English Premier League? Yeah, since I started to play, I always watch, you know, games Premier League and it was my dream and now it's come true and the dream of every boy is to play in England. It's a big move for a young player to leave his homeland and come over to England. When did you first find out that Everton wanted to sign you? Yeah, but I'm prepared, you know, for that and after the first game it was some speculations, you know, but after the second game it started to be real and when I heard about the interest of Everton, you know, it was some other clubs, but uh, no, big, uh, no big clubs as Everton. And I, when I heard about, it, I only want to go in Everton. What type of what type of player are you? I'm a type of player who wants to play football. You know, I want to uh, play with the ball. I want I move a lot. To, I ask the ball, and I like you know to dribble also. And I think the fans will enjoy it. And you've scored a few goals already this season, haven't you? Back in Croatia. Yeah, but uh, now I want to start scoring Premier League. When did you start to play football, Nicola? When you were a, when you were a small boy? Yeah, I was a small boy. I, as I can remember, you know, father always said that I start, you know, from four years. But you no, know, uh, I'm in football all my life. And uh, when uh, you dream of something when you are young, and uh, it's finally coming true, so it's it's a very good feeling, you know. And your father has always been involved in sport, hasn't he? Yeah, he's always been involved, you know, I have a sister too, she's Blanca Lashi, she world uh, athletic high jump and she was uh, world uh, champion 
and uh, my father, you know, he's uh, from, uh, from when I was a boy, he was always with me. We have a very special connection and uh, he helped me a lot. And he said you've scored 30,000 goals. Yeah, when I was younger, but then, you know, it was <laughs> so easy to score 10 <laughs> goals uh, for a match, you know, but it's good. You were at Hajduk Split a long time. Is it, is it difficult to leave your friends behind? Yeah, it's difficult, uh, but uh, they all prepared, you know. Uh, I speak with them and uh, they know what is life uh, and they know how happy I am and they, have, they are happy too. And Ronald Koeman, of course, is a well-known name in the world of football. He was a superstar as a player, so I suppose Ronald Koeman was a big influence on your decision to come to Everton. Of course, when a manager like that and an ex-player like that uh, wants you to come in Everton to be under uh, his training programme, uh, you cannot deny that. You know. And are you aware of the Croatian relationship we've had over the years with Nikita Jelovic and Slavon Bilic at Everton? Yeah, I know that all. Uh, I will speak. Uh, I will make contacts with them to ask a little <laughs> bit more. <laughs> Just talking about international football, coming to Everton and playing in the Premier League, regularly we hope in the Premier League, that will help your chances at international level with Croatia? Yeah, I hope, but you know, there is a lot of great, great players uh, uh, like Modric, like Akitic, Mandzukic, and uh, I think uh, if I play good in Premier League, if I play good at Everton, uh, I'll get uh, my chance. What's the plan then? For the next few days, what have you got to sort out? Yeah, I need to come uh, back uh, from uh, to split to pick up my stuff, uh, to say goodbye to everybody, and can come here to you know, find house, find a place to crash, and uh, take a car or something like that. And uh, but that is all small stuff. Uh, I, I will enjoy to do because you know I'm finally in Premier League. You're just looking at it as a as a, a big, wonderful experience, aren't you? Yeah, of course. It's. Uh, more than experience, it's you know, it's now my life, and I, I will need two more days, you know, five, three more days to see that it's real. And the weather, the sunshine's not too bad. It's not as warm as Split, but it's nice. It's nice, you know, some rain, then sun, and then you know, but it's nice. You better get used to the rain, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was Nikola Vlasic there, one of a plethora of new faces who have already driven through the gates here at USM Finch Farm this summer. Another new face, of course, was Sandro Ramirez, but his early days here at Everton were somewhat disrupted by injury. However, the boy is now back to full fitness, and as he told us after the Chelsea game, he's determined to show the Evertonians just what he's all about. Sí. We knew it was going to be a tough afternoon. We play against a very tough opponent with very good individualities. But the team kept fighting until the end and we couldn't get any point, but we, you know, we, kept, we kept the fight until, right until the end. You seem to settle into Everton very, very well. You do well in the Europa League games. You play well in your first Premier League game against Stokes. So how frustrating was it that you then had to miss out for two weeks? Yeah, it, it was it was frustrating because I, I, I was out. It, it happened already at the beginning of the game against Stoke, so it, it made me I couldn't play at 100 percent of myself on that that game. But now I just look forward for these two weeks off uh, to work very hard, and now I am feeling 100 percent and to work very hard to be ready for the for the Spurs game. You've only played two matches in the Premier League, so it's very early days. But what are the main differences you're finding between Premier League football and what you were used to in Spain? Yeah, mainly the I would say the Premier League is a little bit less tactical, but much more intense. Uh, they close down very quickly. You don't have that time on the ball, and, and in Spain is more like possession based and more maybe tactical. And that for me is the main difference in between bo both leagues. Y que diferencia una liga a otra, no? Do you enjoy those differences? Because you're a physical, fast player, like to run about a lot, like to put in a lot of challenges. So does it suit you? It's early days to, to, to speak, but that was one of the reasons I came here. I think the Premier League uh, suit my characteristics, uh, you know, to, to, to make these to make these runs in behind, attack the spaces, and I, I think yeah, it, it fits me. But as I say, it's too early to to judge because it's only two games. And like you say, it is still very early, but how are you finding life at Everton and how have you like the supporters here? Uh, very good, very good uh, with, the, with the teammates, with the club, with the, with the technical staff, uh, very good um, with the fans, uh, very, very good. Uh, we always feel the, the, the support from them, even when the things don't go right. So uh, overall, very, very good. Everyone is helping me to, to settle very, very quickly. 
That was Sandro Ramirez there, clearly determined to make a big impression at Everton Football Club. And as we've already alluded to, he's just one of many new faces in this transfer window for Everton Football Club. Let's remind ourselves of all the others, and I'll see you very shortly for part two. Welcome back to part two of this week's Everton show. As you can see, I'm joined here at USM Finch Farm by the Diamond, Graeme Stewart. Transfer deadline day yesterday, Graeme. It doesn't seem to generate the excitement around the Premier League that it used to. No, you're right, actually. I mean, I think most of the clubs nowadays just try and get their business done and dusted as quickly as they can. Uh, get their players, as we have done, uh, in for the pre-season so everybody beds down and settles in. Obviously, there's always a little bit of last-minute um, rolling of the dice, as it were. But unfortunately, um, you know, I, I don't particularly agree with it, if I'm totally honest with you. Mm. Um, I was actually listening to Simon Jordan on Talk Sport in my car yesterday, and he said to me, why do we shut it? Don't just leave it open, because there's all kinds of different elements. I mean, you know, play, we talk about player power and bits and pieces like that. If, if, you've, if there's not a deadline, the player can't put any pressure on the club to mm. sell them, you know, and vice versa. It's, 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 I think what he said was really quite interesting and something that needs looking at. And of course, the Spanish deadline extends for a further 24 hours, so should they desire, they can just come over and, and pick what they want. I know, it's a crazy situation. I know everything doesn't quite fall in line across Europe and there's reasons behind it, but I'd like to see it revamped, if I'm honest with you. Deadline day might have been relatively quiet for Everton Football Club, but that's because, as you've alluded to, we'd already brought eight players in anyway. Yeah, and, and, and good players as well. And I think that was, you know, behind Ronald and Steve Walsh's thinking to get players in, as we mentioned before, for, for pre-season, to go on the pre-season trips, because that's important as well, to bed in and, 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 you know, to get used to your teammates, not only on the football field, but off it as well. So, uh, you know, I think we're all pretty reasonably happy about, you know, the business that, that, that has been done so far. Way back in the day when Everton Football Club, when the great Howard Kendall swooped for Graeme Stewart from <laughs> Chelsea, the season had already started, hasn't it? So you missed out on the pre-season yeah. trips, you missed out on the pre-season yeah. training. So was there, a, was there a little bit of catch-up? Yeah, there was. I'll be honest with you, there was. I mean, I'd, I'd been in and out of bits and pieces, in, especially games at Chelsea. So whilst I'd done all the pre-season running, I hadn't really played any football. Uh, so I came to Everton not really match fit and to get that back playing Premier League football is tough. So that explains my slow start. <laughs> <laughs> it turned into a terrific bit of business. Money well spent. Right, one of the popular features, the many popular features of the Everton show this season is what we call My Firsts. This week it's the turn of the skipper. This is Phil Jagielka. <laughs> Uh, my first car was a Renault Clio 1.4 Dynamic. I had it for a little while. Um, it came with a year's free insurance, so that was an added bonus. I'm difficult, my own first boots, probably a pair of Puma King. Uh, obviously black leather ones back in the day, there was no uh, bright ones. Probably my brother, I've said that before, uh, five years older, so Always wanted to do what he did. He was obviously pretty good, and uh, so just just chasing him around, following him around. Probably got a bit annoying for him, but that's uh, with the main reason I play football today. Uh, hamster died on my birthday, so that's never a good thing, is it? Gizmo, there you go. We played someone like Carlisle away in the youth team and it was, it was so cold and so wet. So I took my boots off at half time just to get some feeling back in my toes. Puffed to the manager, Russell Slade, uh, as the manager, came in. Obviously not happy, I think we were losing. <laughs> he's, 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 asked, he's asked me, not very politely, if I want to go back out again because I've took my boots off. There's a few expletives in there, so obviously I've panicked. Just chucked my boots on as quick as I could and ran out for the second half. I had Nick Montgomery once, but he didn't like the way I, I, I breathed quite deep in my sleep, and he's, he's a very fussy sleeper. So every so often he'd, he'd literally hit me over the head with a pillow, wake me up just, just to stop me from breathing. So we uh, quickly 
if you change the roomies. <laughs>he buries it to make it 2-0 and we're on our way and we were at the corresponding fixture last season Darren that ended 2-2 and it was a brilliant game of football mm. possibly the best game I'd seen last season and then we just wrapped it up there with a third goal as well so a dream night for the under 23s Little Walsh played well again didn't he? He did yeah he's a, he's a terrific young player uh, Walsh there's no doubt about it he's had his injuries but every time we see him he never lets us down The under 18s even better they put uh, seven goals past West Brom. Yeah, and all off the back of a you know a, a difficult start to the game where we went 1-0 down, but we got ourselves an equaliser to make it 1-1. That's a good old-fashioned centre forward. Yeah, though, of course it? it is. I mean, that's what we want. Fraser Formby, you know, just gets gets a good header on it there. And then it's 1-1 at half-time and all of a sudden, you know, the floodgates open and off we go. Start scoring goals <laughs> left, right and centre. <laughs> Paul Tate must have been delighted with the response because his side, as you say, as we've seen, went to goal down and then to come back before the break and then rattling six in the second of half. Of course, yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's brilliant for Tatey and, and the lads there because it shows the character to, you know, take a little bit of a setback, get themselves back into the game. And then obviously we see Anthony Gordon, especially second mm. half, you know, he gets himself plenty of goals and, you know, all of a sudden we end up with a terrific victory and, that, and that's really, really good to see and that'll give the lads a major confidence boost going forward. At any level of the game, I like to see the goal scorers take the penalties. Yeah. And I, I, I totally agree with you, and it drives me insane. You ever watch a penalty shootout? I mean, I think there was one a couple of weeks away where the goalkeeper took, took a penalty. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, as a centre forward, surely it's a golden opportunity for you to score goals. 7 1 victory. The under 18s, I suppose, will have a little bit of a change side themselves because, by the natural order of progression, some of their boys, Tatey's boys, will have moved up into Unzi's squad. Yeah, but that's what's going to happen. I mean, and, and we don't want to discourage that because if, you, if you're good enough, you're old enough. And little Benny, for, for example, mm. is one of the ones who played plenty of under-23 football last year. So he'll gain from that experience. He'll be a big player, Benny Benningamy. Well, a big player last season and somebody who else has hit the ground running at the start of this season was Liam Walsh. He's had a terrific start to the campaign. So much so, he's been lured away to Birmingham City on loan. But before he went, we sat down with little Walsh at USM Finch Farm to chat about his recovery from the injury that wrecked his summer. Yeah, um, it's been, been a long time being injured. Um, you know, being off the pitch can get stressful at times, but I think it happens to most players and it's just, um, you know, it uh, depends on how, how you come back from. You've got to come back uh, stronger and my first two games I've got out 70-odd minutes and then 90 minutes, so I feel I'm match fit again and it feels good to be back playing. Bit of stiffness after all that time out? Yeah, yeah after the first game, I think it took about a week or something. Then after that game the other day, um, I know that took a couple of days, but we were back in training today and it felt good. Like you say, it's part and parcel of football. Everybody gets injured at some point, but it's mentally as well as physically tough, isn't it, when, to be out so long? Yeah, definitely. All, all you want to do is just play football, you know, and with the injury stopping you, um, how you go about things is, is a lot differently. You've got to be a lot more professional. Um, I think the training that you do um, while, whilst you're injured is a lot more important than whilst you're fit, because um, you know, when you come back, you've got to come back strong, and it's hard for players to come back from injury and be the same player. But if you keep on top of your work, then I'm sure you'll do well. Was the large periods when you had to just do repetitive <coughs> stuff, come in and do the same thing day in, day out? Yeah, especially through the summer. You know, I've seen everyone going on their holidays and I had to come in week in, week out every day. Just doing uh, some work on my own, just with the fitness coaches and there was times where I felt like giving up. But I think uh, the physios have helped me a lot and I've had a setback, but I'm not going to you know, try and um, dwell on that too much. But just as long as I'm playing football and starting games, then I'll be happy. 
Good luck to Liam Walsh at Birmingham City. I know a few Birmingham City fans, by the way, and they'll thoroughly enjoy having Liam Walsh on board. And good luck to Callum Connolly as well, as he starts his loan period at Ipswich Town. But the big football news of the weekend is the dramatic comeback <laughs> of Graham Stewart. Alongside a good few else, I'm telling you. But uh, This, of course, is Sunday afternoon, the Bradley yeah. Lowry game at Goodison Park. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's a, a terrific occasion and a, a wonderful you know, gesture by the football club as well. Both football clubs coming together for young Bradley, who tragically lost his life. So it'll be a good afternoon. Get out, come and see some of the older players. A little bit rounder these days as well. But uh, no, I'm looking forward to it. Are you looking forward to it or are you dreading it? No, I'm genuinely looking forward to it. I mean, I was on a tour last night at Goodison and just walking down that tunnel, I was saying to the young players, the graduates who are coming through, uh, saying, look, every single time I walk down this tunnel, the hairs on the back of your neck stick up and the Z cars was on and everything like that. So, you know, the chance you get to play at Goodison Park, you know, take it on board. Peter Reid's your gaffer, he's ably assisted by Snods, but what about yourself, Graham? Any special pre-match preparations? Yeah, I've had a think about it and I'm going to stay in Saturday night, Dad. <laughs> the Snods, though? He suggested it. <laughs> I find that very difficult to believe. But we'll pop along anyway to the Bradley Lowry benefit game on Sunday afternoons for a great cause. And that's just about it for this week's programme. Thank you very much for tuning in. My thanks to Diamond and to Nicola Vlasich. Please do join us for another Everton show in seven days' time. You've been watching The Everton Show on YouTube. Thank you very much for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed the show. I'm sure you have. Don't forget to subscribe to catch every future episode.